Welcome to my unboxing of the Asus 210 Silent. This is an NVIDIA card with HDMI and physics by NVIDIA. Not quite sure what physics is. Um, I haven't researched it enough. I'll probably get a lot of criticisation about that, but I'm not a massive fan of NVIDIA. I prefer AMD cards. So, um, though I don't think NVIDIA cards are bad, I'm not saying that at all, I just don't use them. I prefer to use AMD graphics cards. So let's have a look and see what you get. Right, so let's have a look inside. I have checked to see if everything's there and as it should be, and to my knowledge it is. So, let's open it up. So we've got the graphics card. Now, let's go over a few basic features of what we can see on the card itself. Just So, um, well straight away we can see it's got a passive cooler, so there's going to be absolutely no noise whatsoever. Now there is instantly a problem that, uh, that comes with passive cooling. This heat sink is instantly a lot bigger and is not going to fit in a lot of small cases. <coughs> now, on the plus side, again as the last card we tested, you've, you can remove the VGA. So you can unscrew the VGA and I assume they provide low profile brackets and blanking plates not blanking plates, back plates. So you can put this in a low profile case with no problem whatsoever. Um, whether or not they include two so you can use a VGA or not is different story. Now the HDMI will be available on the uh, low profile blanking plate. We know that because the HDMI is fixed on the card so that will be available. Now I like these cards for one reason and that's because they're good performing HD playback sort of cards. You know they can do basic media media jobs and that. And some of them tend to play low quality games better than what an onboard GPU would. Um, but then I wouldn't recommend something like this over say onboard Intel HD 3000. Would not recommend that at all. So or even 4,000 shall I say um, it's debatable it's a very very debatable subject so let's have a look see what else you get in the box so we've got two blanking plates one is for both HDMI and DVI and one is for the VGA to go on the top which allows you to use all the, all the outputs. You've also got a speed setup guide by Asus. So let's have a look at this. Comes in multiple languages, so you don't have to read through the whole book. Though you shouldn't really need to read through it anyway, unless you're a novice and you're not quite sure on what you're doing. You've got the driver disc that comes with it. Um, install that, then go to Asus's website and download the latest version or even NVIDIA's website, whatever you prefer. I would go to Asus because they may have tweaked with this card a little and their software might work better with their card. So let's have a look at what other little features you get with this card. We're only going to look what it says on the box. Nought decibel cooling. The exclusive silent thermal design dissipates heat efficiently without noise. EMI shield. EMI shield efficiently blocks 66% radiations to protect user's health and improve graphics clarity. So, let's have a look. What else? That's pretty much all it has to say for itself. Radiations. Well, it's a nuclear graphics card. I, I'm just kidding. <coughs> so, 
It's got one gigabyte DDR3. It's not going to be as fast as one gigabyte DDR5, say on a gaming graphics card. Um, this is going to be 64-bit memory, nothing like 256-bit that you see on the high-end graphics cards. So it is going to be extremely, extremely noticeably slower. This will not play games, um, high-end games. It'll play low-range games and stuff. It'll play that fine. So. Don't expect to buy this card and being able to play Battlefield on ultra high settings because it just won't happen. Thanks for watching and don't forget to rate and subscribe.